Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our inventory tutorial series and we're just going to be putting in UI and having the icon show up into a grid like structure. This is quite simple but we're going to go over it real slow like and make sure that I go over everything as cleanly as possible. So going ahead and getting started. Now before we do anything I want to kind of go over how all this is going to work. So we have our player character here and I've added a new little inventory UI and this is just a control stretched out using full rect and then a panel in the bottom left hand corner and the panel I stylized using a little style box flat. Now within that panel there is a margin container and I put all the margins to five pixels and I just made this full rect using the anchors and then there's a grid within that. Now the grid is shrink to center. It's going to look a little bit weird if you don't have enough slots. In this case this one's set up for 20. I just did it so that the buffers on the sides would be all right and we have our little slot down here. If we drag it into the grid container the slot just is comprised of a button and a rect inside of that button. So the button itself has the visuals for the slot. If you go down to style you have a hover, a pressed, and a normal. These are just just pretty much the exact same thing as the panel that it's in except with slightly different colors and then within that if you open that up we have a texture rec that has nothing in it and its expand mode is set to ignore size if we go over we have some little icons here if we drag one in you can see it frames it within the slot and this is how it's going to work basically we're going to have our inventory system and within that inventory system we're going to have a grid container which we're going to fill with slots whenever the game starts those slots are then stored in memory and it knows which slots are what index and whenever you pick up an item it puts it into the first unfilled slot now the slot itself is responsible for handling displaying the icon and later on dragging and dropping and d showing information when you mouse over it and things like that but for now we're not going to worry about any of that all we're going to worry about is getting the slots in and getting the icon showing so let's go ahead and get started with that we're going to delete that a little slot right there because everything's just going to be handled on startup. And we're going to change a couple things. First off, we're going to change the item data because we need an icon associated with this item. So if we just go ahead and add an export for the icon, it'll be of type texture 2D. And we'll be doing the same thing in the mono version. Make sure we save both of those. And then also over in the player interaction handler, we need something a little bit different. We need to actually be emitting a signal when we pick up an item. If we go ahead and add a new signal for on item picked up and then in parentheses item which is just a type variant so it'll be just whatever the item is then we also go ahead and use the emit function we can pass in that item types and then in brackets i this will pass over the item template that we've already set up in the player interaction handler right here and we don't currently have an icon associated with it so let's go ahead and hit quick load and let's just select that box icon so that'll look just fine we can go ahead and save that let's go over to the c sharp version and go ahead and add in that delegate void the on item picked up event handler remember signals in c sharp require the event handler ending on the names and we're going to be passing an item data mono type and then we're just going to use the emit signal right here and we're going to use the signal name dot on item picked up and we're going to be passing in that template this will just go ahead and hand off that item pickup whenever you pick up an item now there is a little edge case here if we happen to pick up an item and there's not space in the inventory later on we need to handle the inventory dropping that item so the item will be picked up and immediately dropped because there's just not enough space in the inventory there is probably more elegant ways to do it but i like using the signals because it means that if this script is not connected to anything there are no errors it doesn't break it's just there's no inventory for the item to go to so we can go ahead and save that and we're good to go there now we do need to go ahead and add a couple new scripts we're going to need one for the inventory slot and we're also going to need one for the inventory ui so let's go ahead and make the inventory slot one first so we're going to create a new script this will just be called inventory slot and we're going to inherit it from control i'm also going to go ahead and add the inventory slot mono and it's also going to be inheriting from control so diving on in, let's get started. So first off, we're going to have a class name for inventory slot. We're going to have a reference to that icon slot. That's that texture rec right up there. So we'll make it of type texture rec. And we're going to be passing in two variables. The first one's going to be an inventory slot ID, and this is just going to be handled based off of the inventory. And then a slot filled Boolean, which is just going to default defaults. And whenever you pick up an item and put it into the slot, it'll be true. That way the inventory knows which slots are available and which aren't. And last but not least, we also need a slot data. So that'll be whatever item that this slot is currently being filled with. Now, remember, these are not the actual objects. These are a reference to that template inside of the player interaction handler. Just be aware that you shouldn't change anything about this. All of the items that are of the same type are referencing the same item data object. Now we can go ahead and create a new function called fill slot. It will be taking a parameter of type item data and it will be setting that slot data to that. It'll be setting slot filled to true and it'll go ahead and select the icon 
onslot.texture to the data.icon. That'll go ahead and pull over that icon that we got and put it into the texture room. And later on, we'll be handling dragging and dropping and deleting things here. All right, so following that, we are going to go ahead and need our inventory handler. So we'll go ahead and throw that into the inventory folder and we'll create a new script called inventory handler. This one can just inherit from node. And of course, we'll create the mono version. So we can go ahead and open that up and get started. So first off, we're gonna need our class name as well as global class in the C sharp, just like we did with the inventory slot. And we're gonna need a reference to how many item slots that there are in this grid. In our case, it'll be 20, but depending on the shape and the game scope that you wanna do, you'll be more or less. Following that, we do need a reference to that inventory grid. This will be of type grid container. And following that up, we do need a reference to that inventory slot prefab. In our GD script, we can go ahead and just do a preload on that. It'll be preloading from the inventory slot, the inventory slot pack scene down there. But in C Sharp, of course, you gotta manually set that. And last, we're gonna need a reference to all of the inventory slots that are already created. And this will be just an array in GD script, and it'll be a list in C sharp. We're just gonna make this private, and we're gonna be referencing this anytime we add items or remove items. And when we're on our ready function, we'll go ahead and fill this array out. So inside of our ready function, let's go ahead and create a new for loop. And we're just gonna say for all of the item slots count, this will be 20 times. We're gonna go ahead and create a new item slot, and we're just gonna be instantiating that inventory slot prefab. We can go ahead and add this as a child to our inventory grid and we'll set its inventory slot ID and we'll just append that or add it in C sharp to our inventory slots array or list in C sharp. And that's pretty much all we need for the ready function. That'll go ahead and spawn all of those little slots and we'll be good to go there. Now we do need a function to handle whenever we pick up a new item, however. And this will just be called from that signal on the interaction handler. So we're going to create a new function. We're going to be calling it pickup item, and we'll be passing in a parameter of item data. And that'll be just once again, handled from that signal. Now we're going to go through every slot in the inventory slots array, and we'll just be checking to see if that slot is filled. And if it is not filled, we're going to go ahead and call that function that we just created called fill slot with that item. And we're going to be breaking right there. So this will just iterate through all the inventory slots and go ahead and drop wherever we are. Now, mind you, later on, we'll need to check to see if it makes it to the end of this function and it hasn't actually put it into a slot, we'll need to drop it, but that'll be a problem for another day. So we'll go ahead and save this and get back in and see how it looks. All right, so there's a little bit of setup to do. First off, let's go ahead and put in that inventory slot. We can drag in the GD script and then we can select the texture rec using the icon slot and that'll go ahead and handle all of that. Really, we don't need to do anything else here. We can go over to the player prefab and there's a couple things we need to do here. We're going to be dragging in the inventory handler and the inventory grid is going to be that grid container down below it. And the inventory slot will go ahead and be automatically filled in the GD script. In the C sharp script, you will have to select this and that's the inventory slot prefab that we just added. Now, the item slots count i set it to 20 it just looks better with 20 on my grid set it to whatever looks good for you of course now we can go ahead and save that over on the interaction area we do need to make sure we have that icon and then we'll go up to node and select the new signal we can hit connect on that we'll select the inventory ui pick it and just select that pickup item function we'll go ahead and connect that and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and hit, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner, we have all of these little slots and I rigged them to have on hover and on click. And if we walk up to an item and we press F, it now enters into that inventory. Now we can't currently do anything with it, but for now, this is good enough. Next week, we'll be working on actually making drag and drop functionality, repositioning them as well as dropping them. And then the week after, we'll probably work on making little tooltips that show information about them, their name and description when you mouse over and then maybe the week after we'll work on actually equipping some of these items obviously we don't have items per se but for now this will be it later on we might actually add proper equipment that does different things based off of what you have equipped but for now that's it thank you all for watching i hope you all have a wonderful week i hope this was helpful and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial